House of the Dragon episode 3. You know what? At this point, yeah. Let's go to fucking war. If only to see this idiot get burned alive by a dragon. During this whole episode, I was fantasizing about what would be the most satisfying way to see him die. And I'm not gonna lie, when Bela and her dragon almost ate them, I was gagging because I just know they pissed themselves a little bit. I just love that my girl got some practice in, like, yeah. And I've decided, I think at the hands of Rhaenyra, would bring me the most joy. Like, a fear it just has to be her. Speaking of Rainier, oh my god, that scene with her and Allison has to be one of my favorite scenes to date. Not only because it was a moment that we've all been waiting for, but it gave everything it was supposed to give. Except them coming to an agreement, but more on that later. I've been dying for Rainier to ask Allison what she really thought she fucking heard. Just so Rainier could tell her, yeah, bitch, you misunderstood. And not that I expected Allison to put her pride aside and admit it, but also because I knew it would make her spiral to fucking Jupiter. Better. Her whole life since Viserys died was based on what she thought she heard. And even the mere concept of the possibility that she heard wrong is about to haunt the living shit out of her, even if she's too stubborn to admit it. And her kind of standing up to Aegon in the preview for next week is so exciting because it means that what Rhaenyra said really struck a chord with her. Even though I fear she might be right about it being too late, and even if she wanted to stop it, does she even have a say with the way everyone on that council undermined her? Personally, I think she has more allies and more of a voice and she even realizes she does. I feel like she's so used to men not listening to her, but she's also extremely sexist herself. She's just highly conflicted. Can we talk about Rainey's for a bit though? Because not only do her side eyes give me life, but she consistently has some of the best dialogue. She was speaking nothing but facts. That scene where she was telling Rainiera that sending Eric to kill her wasn't the work of Otto Hightower because he would have never allowed this to happen. That hotter blood has prevailed and that soon they won't even remember what started the war in the first place. If it was them taking Rhaenyra's throne, Aemon killing Luke, the beheading of the baby, or all the way back when Aemon lost his eye. That was pure poetry. Everything Team Green is doing is pissing me off. They stay getting on my nerves. That council meeting was such a shit show. I know Viserys is rolling in his grave. And if Otto were dead, he would be too. Like, I know he's low-key evil, but he was the only one on that council that was pragmatic and that had experience and that thought with some foresight and not his dick. And now it's just a bunch of egotistical, unreasonable, incompetent men who want to rationalize a war that could have been avoided in the first place, who can't even think ahead for two seconds to see how it's all going to result in their destruction because they think that they can win. No one wins in a war. Remember that I said that? I can't even look at Kristen Cole without wanting to cave his head into a wall. His face just screams incompetence. Even after his stupid ass plan got Sir Eric killed, he doesn't even have the brains to switch up his strategy. He just keeps calling for more violence on his little quest to kill Rhaenyra. Still salty about her not wanting to run away with his broke ass. Like, get over it. And I just know his ass is mad because Aegon replaced all the good knights with his old dumbass friends. I bet you he's kicking himself for yelling at Sir Eric over a dirty cloak. Like, yeah, stupid, he was one of the good ones. I said this last week, but I absolutely love the idea of Maesera and Rhaenyra joining forces. Like, yeah, sis, spill all the damn tea. She knows the struggles of the small folk and the inner workings of what happens at King's Landing. And that's exactly what Rhaenyra needs right now. I'm really curious to know what you guys thought of Rhaenyra sending Reyna away with the babies. In my opinion, I think it was really wise and kind. Because Dragonstone, as we saw from last week's episode, is incredibly easy to get to from King's Landing. They could so easily try another murdering scheme. It's so clear that Reyna has such complicated feelings about not having a dragon. She feels like they see her as less than. But I really don't think they do. I think they love her anyway and they just want to keep her safe. And it really showed how much Rhaenyra trusts her because she entrusted her with what she holds the most dear. Her babies. And she's also entrusting Reyna with something way more important than fighting in a war. Their future in case they don't make it. It's a huge responsibility and I think Rena sees that in the end. Let's talk about Corliss's sneaky ass because he's mad sus. Aegon is really about to find out what a man of your talents really means to Corliss. You can't just be vague with this man and expect him to not do something crazy but I'm sure he's gonna find that out the hard way. I love that look that Aegon gives himself in the mirror afterward because he's finally becoming self-aware of how much of a fraud he really is. And I think it's perfect. I'm really here for it. Because it's insane to think about that in the few weeks that he's been king, he's already started a war. Like who the fuck does that? An insane person, that's who. Going down in history as another mad king. 